Now that we've introduced the concepts of injections and bijections, we can use these to talk about how many elements are in sets. Since an injection is a function that takes each element from one set and maps it to exactly one element of another set, then if we have an injection from a set A to a set B, then there are at least as many elements in B as there are in A. And since a bijection is an injection that completely covers the set that it maps onto, then if we have a bijection from a set A to a set B, then there are exactly as many elements in B as, they are, as there are in A. And since we're going to be talking about infinite sets a lot, we're not going to use the word number to talk about how many elements there are in these sets. Instead, we're going to use the word cardinality. Another thing worth noting is that if we have a bijection from the set A to the set B, we also have a bijection from the set B to the set A, formed simply by taking the inverse at each element. So now that we have all of this, we're going to look at some bijections between common infinite sets. The first one is going to be from the natural numbers to the integers. And so it might seem like there are more integers than there are natural numbers because the integers are the positive and negative whole numbers while the natural numbers are just the positive ones. But there is, in fact, a function, and that function is f of x is equal to the ceiling of x over 2 times negative 1 to the x. And so the ceiling of a number is the lowest integer that is greater than or equal to the number. So let's see what this function does for the first few inputs. So f of 0 is going to be the ceiling of 0 over 2, which is the ceiling of, of 0, which is 0. And then whatever we multiply that by, we're going to get 0. f of 1 is going to be the ceiling of 1 half, which is 1. And then we're going to multiply that by negative 1 to the 1, which is just negative 1. And then uh, the next one is going to be the ceiling of 2 halves, which is the ceiling of 1, which is 1. And then we're going to multiply that by negative 1 squared, which is 1. And so 1 times 1 is equal to 1. After that, um, f of 3 is going to be the ceiling of 3 halves, which is um, going to be 2. And then we're going to have an odd exponent here, and so that's going to make it a negative 1, and then we're going to multiply 2 by negative 1 and get negative 2. And then um, after that, we're going to get a 2 here. We're going to get 4 halves, and then this is going to be positive, so we're going to get 2. And if we keep going like this, you'll start to see the pattern. Um, first we have the negative version and then we have the positive version and we just keep zigzagging back and forth like that and we can list all the numbers that way. And so another bijection that exists is one from the natural numbers to the rationals. Now it might seem like there are a lot more rationals than there are natural numbers because between any two natural numbers there are infinitely many rationals. But uh, there is, in fact, this bijection. And I'm actually not going to show this bijection. I'm going to show that there is a bijection from the natural numbers to the positive rationals. And then using this technique that I showed earlier, you can probably come up with this one on your own. And so to make this bijection, um, we're going to want to list out all the rational numbers kind of nicely. And to do that, we're going to put them out in a grid. 
Um, and we're going to start by uh, filling up the first column with everything with denominator 1. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Next, we're going to put everything with denominator 2. So that's going to be 1 half. And then we're going to skip 2 halves because 2 halves is 1 and we already listed it in the first column. So we're going to go directly to 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves, 9 halves, and so on. Next, everything with denominator 3. So 1 third, 2 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, and so on. Denominator 4, quarter, 3 quarters, 5 quarters, and so on. Everything with denominator 5, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, and so on. And uh, we'll do everything with denominator 6, but we'll just stop very early on that. And you can see the pattern in this way is we just keep increasing the denominator by 1, and so we'll keep going in that direction. And so once we have all these rational numbers listed out in this grid, we can create our function from the natural numbers to the rationals by defining f of 0 is equal to 1. So we'll start at 1. And then f of 1 is going to be equal to 1 half. f of 2 is going to be equal to 2. f of 3 is going to be equal to 3. f of 4 is going to be equal to 3 halves f of 5 is going to be equal to 1 third. And we'll just keep on zigzagging through this grid like this. And if we do it this way, for every rational number, or every positive rational number in this case, there's going to be some natural number uh, such that f of that natural number is going to give the rational that we wanted. And also, since we uh, wrote them out like this, um, each rational number occurs exactly once on the list. So there's not going to be two natural numbers that map to the same rational. And so this is, in fact, a bijection. And so um, the natural numbers and the rational numbers have the same cardinality.